headlines about historically very low mortgage rates and banks adding new monthly fees and the return of the layaway plans just in time for holiday shopping. New financial stories come out every day. They may have you panicked. I don't understand most of them. So we have money experts here with answers. So please welcome the author of The Real Cost of Living, Carmen Wong Ulrich, and the author of Master Your Debt, Jordan E. Goodman. Welcome. Nice to meet you. rates are at their all-time low. How long will this last? Is this the best time to be refinancing your house? And what are they? Now? Well, rates can get us below 4%, actually. About 3.9%. It's really quite amazing. On 30-year uh, mortgages, 15-year mortgages low is like 3.3, something like that. Wow. So, yes, if your current mortgage is maybe 4.5% or higher, it probably makes sense for you to refinance your mortgage if you can. And rates will stay low for a long time because fixed mortgage rates are tied to the Fed rate. And we know that the Fed has promised, they've made a okay. promise, to keep rates low through 2013. Now, there are other things that influence mortgage rates, of course, but we can assume that they'll stay under 6% for quite a while. Now, I know I come from a family where they go, pay off your mortgage, yeah. don't owe anybody anything, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem so to have why? But let me tell you, here's yeah. the thing. A lot of folks today, especially with what happened in this recession, people losing so much equity in their homes. I've seen people lose their life savings in their homes. Right. Understand that when you buy a home, you're essentially you're buying an asset like a mm -hmm. stock, right? And you need to save for retirement just as much as you need that mortgage paid off. So I don't want you putting tons of money into your home and paying it off unless and until you have lots of cash savings, of course, so just in case you lose your job, and that you are saving for retirement, on track to save for retirement, because there's nothing like being house rich cash poor, then what do you do? You end up having to borrow against your home for a much higher price. Okay, so Jordan, I, I, I just want to move on sure. because we have so many, unless That's you have something you've got to say. Just very quickly, there is a way of doing that and paying your mortgage off in about five to seven years and still saving for retirement as well, which is what's called mortgage equity optimization using a HELOC. There's a website people can find out more, truthinequity.com. So I that's another way to do it. I didn't understand what you were talking about. Okay, Jordan, most of the major national banks are adding now monthly fees uh, when you use your debit card. Right. And if you don't meet these requirements, then uh, you, you have problems. That's right. So, so, so is there a way to avoid these fees? Absolutely. So what you can do is you can switch to a local community bank or credit unions in many cases will actually have... Uh, no minimum balance or very low minimum balances and not these fees. Like Bank of America is charging $5 a month to use your debit card now, which is something that hits your checking account all, automatically. So, yes, you can. And the other thing you can do is actually use cash, get cash out of the ATM. They don't pay fees for that and shop with cash instead of a debit well, card now, to avoid I those use, fees. I use my debit card a lot. Uh, do you recommend using the credit card or the debit card? See, credit card, the advantage of that is you're building a credit record. As long right. as you pay it off as in long full. As you pay it off. If you pay it off in full, that's now, good. We and don't get a lot of fans for actually saying this, but, but actually using a credit card, over 80% of us are okay with using credit cards. We don't get into any debt trouble, right? Yep. If you use a credit card, you're basically floating just this 28 day loan. You're not paying any interest on it if you pay it off in full every month, and right. we all do that. Whereas now with debit cards, as you see, they're just getting more and more expensive, so, so you have to be really credit careful. Cards more than debit cards. Absolutely. And actually, in Online banks too have a lot of offerings too That's that right. community banks in, don't. Since in, I bank a lot online, in many cases you can interest. get rewards from credit cards you can't get from debit cards these days. There's a website to help people there, creditcardperks.com. You can get fantastic deals. You just have to go get them. Expect yeah, instead I of pay for my fertility with my American Express, I can fly to China. There you, all go. Those <laughs> there you go. That's a lot of points. Okay, now layaway plans. You yes. know, we're, we're getting layaway, ready for yeah. the holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, is is so using layaway a good idea? What, oh, what do you, Sherry, what do you think, don't be mad at me. I know you're a love layaway. Fan of this girl, but I gotta tell you, it's a dangerous, expensive thing. And let me really? tell you why. Here's why the way a layaway works is right, you hear all the ads out there right now, you're basically locking in a price. Today, in October, November, can you imagine what the price on that thing is going to be at December when you get close to the holidays? It's You're going to save 20, 20 to 60 percent in lower holiday lower. sales. And what sales. happens is that retailers would love for you to lock in today's price they won't, and pick but it you up can't in December. go to them and go, it's on sale, mm -hmm. low, no. readjust. Not a lot of them don't have that policy, so you have to be careful. Also, no. if there's a $5 service fee, that's mostly if, yeah. you know, for doing layaway. Mm. Eight to 12 weeks is when you, the time out of time you have to pay it off. I would much rather you saved that money instead, got the discount at the end, and don't forget, if you can't pay it off within those eight weeks or those 12 weeks, you pay a cancellation fee, right. and you don't have anything to show for it in the end. I'd rather you save up the cash and spend in December and rake in all those savings. Okay, I'm going to move on because we have so many different questions. A report just came out with the news about student loan debt, right. and it has hit an all-time record high. 
with the amount that says of total loans exceeding one trillion dollars. That's right. What can you do to pay back your student loans? I mean, I have friends in their forties who are still paying off well, are. as you are graduate school. People have yes, I am. So <laughs> what do you do with this? And it's also it's not dischargeable in bankruptcy, by the way, student loans. So it's not something you can get rid of easily. Uh, you can consolidate them, which might help a little bit. Uh, but you can't get rid of them. How do you, you know, consolidate them? Uh, there are federal programs. There's actually a website to help people, studentloanassistance.org, that can actually help you consolidate your student loans. But you're not going to be able to get rid of them. You'll just be able to consolidate them into a lower interest the, rate. The key is to be really careful about how much you're taking out in loans. For example, if you're looking at putting your child into school in the next four or five years, just be careful. It's not horribly bad to borrow. I'm still paying grad school loans. I'm 40, but the percentage is so low, and I got such a big jump in terms of income and prestige and all that oh stuff from it. So so you guys yeah. want to be really, really careful and just recognize, like you mentioned, these don't go away right. even yeah. in bankruptcy. So be very careful. Nope. Okay, cars. They're one of the biggest necessities. Is it better to lease or buy? Leasing is for one type of person, and I'll tell you about this guy, because he's sitting right here. That's right. <laughs> grown kids, right? You have no kids or grown kids. You don't carry around animals like a dog, because wear and tear costs can be really, really expensive. You don't drive much, because now some lease limits are only 10,000 miles a year, and also you want a new car every two years or so, and that would be some That's right. I just did. So, for example, in my case, I don't have that many miles, like 15,000 miles a year at most, something like that. As you say, not a lot of wear and tear on the car. I like to get a new car every three or four years. I just turned one in and got a hybrid, so my new car but is more efficient, people, something like that. It doesn't make sense. If you plan on keeping a car, if you have kids, right. like if you with like me, you, you don't want to lease a car because of wear and tear, because of mileage, and you can get a one year old car for the same price as you can for the lease, and you can hold on to the car and have something to sell afterwards. Is that should you buy use? Yeah. You've already okay. taken the depreciation hit on the car. I see. Yeah. Okay. You think we got a lot of fun? We'll have them back for, for more because, boy, do we have a lot of financial questions. Yeah. We thank you both. Carmen Wong Albert and Jordan Goodman. And to book by you to discuss your financial situation with your own accountant or your own advisor. You know, don't just take everything we say for you. We'll be right back.